What's going on everybody? Welcome to my channel and in today's video we're going to be talking about Baki 2020. Alright, now let's get into it. Alright guys, so I wanted to talk about the last season of Baki 2020. I was just scrolling through uh, anime and I found out that Baki actually had a release of the last well, I don't know if this, this is the last season, but the most recent season, Baki 2020. And I didn't notice because it was a Netflix drop. And the Netflix drop, you know, they drop it all in one day. And then you don't really see it. So if you're not there on that, that, that day, you don't, you don't get it, all right? But if you want to hear more about Baki, go ahead and leave a like. And if you guys are interested in more anime videos, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And hit the bell notification so every time I drop a video, you guys can get it, all right? So the reason why I liked Baki 2020 a lot more than the, the last season of Baki is because there was a lot more character development and there was a lot more character interaction characters. We got to see a lot more of the relationship between Baki and his father because we, we all know if you guys have watched Baki, Baki is trying to get revenge against his father. But I think he's trying to get revenge against his father because he did something. Uh, I think he, he might have killed his mother or something like that. You get, really get to see how how much Baki hates his father and why he wants to become the strongest man in the world is because he wants to well he, he wants to take out his father just so he can prove that he's a better martial artist and just because he wants to have revenge on his father for what he did to his mother. You can also see that there's more character thoughts. Like you get to see what you know, see see Emperor Retsu thinks. You also get to see what Baki is thinking about. You know, this predicament that he's in. He's, he's been poisoned. You know, in the earlier type, earlier episodes of the season, you really get to see like him doubting himself. Him not, you know, not wanting to do this tournament. He, he thinks he's in the worst condition. And then you also see him, you know, get out of that rabbit hole because he, because of his his girlfriend. You know his girlfriend kind of reminds him of what he came from and what he's why he's wanting to become the strongest man in the world it, it, you really get to see that in the anime you really get to see that you know develop and unfold because you know after he wins he wins the fight he becomes his his past self he becomes becomes an he becomes an even better condition after he gets out of that poison state and it's all due to him remembering what his goals were and him and his girlfriend reminding him that that he's not fighting for himself. He's also fighting for her, and he's also fighting for his dreams. And I think that was really cool to see in the anime because in the last season we didn't get to see, you know, it was just about it was just about the prisoners breaking out and then you know them just tasting them just testing their strength against the you know the pre-established characters of Baki, like the the mafia boss, you know, Yujiro, uh, Baki. You know, they're just battling it out and there wasn't really much character you didn't really get to see inside the, the brain of Baki or you didn't get to see inside the brain of you know the other character the other supporting characters. You just got to see the history of the fighting, which I also think that's is a it's a very good benefit of Baki, but other than that, the, the second season wasn't you know it wasn't as good as uh, this season. And then of course there was a tournament arc. Everybody loves a tournament arc so I think that's why I highly rate this this season of Baki is because the tournament arc, you know, it's it's a fighting anime, they're all doing these martial arts, and then you get to see these foreigners beat uh, the 4,000 year uh, tradition of Chinese Kenpo, you get to see all the, the Kaios, and then see Emperor Kaku, you know, battle it out with all the Japanese characters and the, and the American foreigners. And you just really get to see that you know startling contrast between um, traditional traditional values of martial arts and you know the modern values of martial arts that Japan is bringing. The the underground tactics versus you know traditional Chinese martial arts. And I think that was a really startling contrast, and you could see between the fighting moves and all of the the background they gave you in between the fights. I thought it was a really cool cool way of setting up that tournament arc. Of course, you also had see Emperor Kaku versus um, Yuzuru Hanma, and I thought that was I thought that was a really really good fight. Uh, I think it's one of my one of the best fights I've seen this year. I'm not gonna I don't mean I don't want to hype it up that much, but I think it's one of the best fights that I've seen this year, considering the anime that I've watched. It's not 
it's 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 cool. It's it's the animation is cool. It's not you know something out of Attack on Titan or anything, but it, it, the ideology behind why they're fighting and you know the, all the ideology of philosophy of you know brute strength and talent versus you know traditional technique, you know strategy. Because I think Sea Emperor Kaku was basically because he was the same way as Yujiro. He just wanted strength, just wanted power. He wanted to build up his muscles to their best so that nobody could stand before him. But then he ultimately found out, you know, through how long he lived, that it's not really about that. It's really about, you know, you need to focus on the traditional values of martial arts. And the values of martial arts is to defend for the weak to defend themselves. And so he really honed in on that part and he got to the level he was, you know, at 150 years old, he got to that level that he stood up against Jujiro and Hanma, who's the considered the strongest man in the world and you know they had a they had a you know a crazy battle and then see Emperor Kaku he developed martial arts to that high of a standard that he basically he basically had this tactic he played dead so he, he literally stopped his heart his martial arts was that developed that he stopped his heart because he thought he was going to die to Yujiro he's such a strong he's just a strong like apex predator that Yujiro thought he was going to die so he he literally stopped his art on the beat. He literally died in the match. And then he came back and we were like, <laughs> he started taunting Yajiro. He's like, hey man, you always had me. It was, it was a crazy, crazy fight. And the interaction after the fight was even, you know, better. You get to see why, who, why they're fighting and, and why they, you know, why both of these sides have developed martial arts to that level of skill. I thought the tournament arc was, was really well done. And it's it's one of my favorite parts of the Baki in general. And then you also got to see new characters added into season season three, mostly Muhammad Ali Jr. and his new his new martial arts that he picked up from his father. Ali martial arts. I don't really know what they called it. I don't think they had a name for it. But it was he basically adopted from his father, and he you know he he, he was basically undefeated in the tournament, and he wanted to go against Baki because. Everybody thought Baki was the top dog in Japan. So, so when they went back from the to Japan from the tournament, you know Muhammad Ali started started trying to fight all the runner-ups in Baki's tournament, so he could you know test out the water, see if he's on Baki's level. And you know if you watch the season, it really didn't go that well. And you know he just kept on getting beat and beat and beat and beat. And then ultimately, what he learned from that is that. Even if you're in your best condition, if you want to be the strongest man in the world, you're going to have to fight. And there's no, and there's such a big difference between fighting just to prove something and just fighting to the death. And I think that, I mean, ultimately he didn't learn that in time for Baki, but when he fought Baki, I think I think the you know Muhammad Ali and Baki uh, Baki fighting was a really good character development for Baki. I don't. I think it was a really good character character development for Muhammad Ali as well because you know them clashing showed Muhammad Ali that fighting for the death is a lot more than fighting for fighting to prove that you're stronger than somebody. And Baki Baki it shows that you know he's he's grown to such a level that he's basically untouchable from untouchable about like everybody else in the world except for his father. And you get to really see that, you know, Baki, if you think about it, Baki never lost to anybody in this season. So it's a big contrast from the last season and in the first season where he was, you know, completely racking up the L's, you know, he was trying to learn from his past mistakes and trying to train as much as he could because he kept on losing. I mean, he, he won, you know, the tournament, he won against some of the prisoners, but he didn't win all of the matches in season two. Baki has grown to such a level that there's not that many that can stop him. He's and at the end of the season, you get to see that uh, his father actually deems him worthy as an opponent, which which really shows that Baki has grown to such a level that the strongest man in the world wants to uh, actually fight him now. And yeah, that's basically all I had to say about Baki 2020. I think it was a really good season. They really did a lot more with the, the character interactions and the development of the characters and then of course there's a tournament arc that's why i think that this season was a lot more better than season two and it's just crazy if you guys want to see really buff guys that have been training their whole lives to become the strongest man in the world 
this is the anime for you, right? If you guys liked it, go ahead and like it. And if you guys have any thoughts or you guys want to, what do you guys think about this season of Vaki? Go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Go.